order to elect the president of the board for the fiscal year beginning July 1, 2013, to take it up. Uh, we've recognized Ms. Lamont, who has submitted a nomination. That nomination has been seconded for Dr. Vladovic. Superintendent. Other board members, are there any other nominations? Yes, I'd like to nominate Tamar Gallatin, please. Hold one second. Oh, is there, oh, is there a second? <laughs> Okay, there is a second nomination for board member Gallatin, seconded. Other board members, are there other nominations? <coughs> the temporary chair does not see any other nomination on the table. We will take those nominations in order. Seeing none, uh, nominations are closed. On the selection of board member Dr. Uh, Dr. Daisy, I'd like to make a motion. Yes, ma'am. I would like to move that each candidate for president um, tell us what they plan to do with that board office. I'll second that. Motion has been seconded. We'll take that up. Uh, any opposed? None opposed. We'll go back to the nominations in order, which would be Dr. Vladovic and then board member Gallatin. Dr. Vladovic, the floor is yours. I uh, have to remember my impromptu speeches. Uh, wasn't ready for that one, but... Uh, in a way, it's easy because for 45 years, I've been very passionate about kids. And it's a belief system that all children can learn. But more importantly, I believe and want to ensure that this district is on top of a belief system that all children can achieve and that we set up the safety nets to ensure that happens. We're going to be going through some traumatic changes, uh, implementing the core standards, we're going to go through some real changes in terms of the expectations for our youngsters uh, with the C average versus the D average. And I just want to ensure as we move this board forward that we continue to bring along all children. I am pleased with our success rate, but I'm not totally happy. There's a big difference. Uh, our dropout rate is still over 25, 30 percent of our youngsters. And every parent that sends their child to this district sends us their very best. I also believe that we need to foster a stronger relationship with parents because I truly believe that, that parents are our equal partners. And as I said, uh, in doing so, we have to ensure that our parents are informed about education. I would advocate very strongly that we're going to need to increase the abilities of our system uh, to help parents gain that knowledge through our adult schools. It's a belief system and, and it's a no-brainer that early childhood works. And I don't understand any resistance to that at all. It works. The statistics are there that say children that participate in that early learning environment in a structured way, reap the benefits through their entire life. So I see a true pre-K through 12 adult continuum. I want to pressure our youngsters, as I said, and ensure that there's a safety net so every youngster that doesn't make it on the first try or the second or the third has a net there to say, we care and you're important to us. I also believe that something we haven't done, and I want to advocate, we haven't done so overtly, and I think partly because of the economic situation, but we need to value our staff. They were the ones that stood up, meaning our teachers, our classified, our administrators, who stood up and took the front. You know, this district doesn't work from us here. It works from there up. And every day there's great things that happen in this district. I also want to work very hard on the image of this district because it's so easy to complain. It's so easy to find exceptions. But when you look at some of the many great things that we're doing, we need to do a better job of highlighting that. I also say that there's an opportunity for all of us to work together. I hold no animus to anyone. I've got an open mind that we can move forward and move forward in the interest of children in a respectful way, ensuring that they get every opportunity. And when some of them aren't successful, as some human beings are, that we step back out and we reach out to them. 
because I think there's no greater institution in this United States, and I've always believed this, than public education. We are going to survive as a nation. Or we're going to die as a nation on public schools because this is our key to the future. And as a human being and as an educator who's committed, I'll never give up on this district, more importantly on our children and our employees. Thank you, Board Member Ladovic. Um, Board Member Gallison, the floor is yours. Thank you. I think one of the most um, important things the board, the new board president has to tackle right away is actually how these board meetings work. Uh, many people in this room, I know a lot of people out there watching, have had to you know, line up outside at 6 o'clock in the morning in order to be first in line or fifth in line in order to rush in here and hope to get a speaker card on the item they want to address this board on. The opportunity to come here and talk to us is that important that you know we, we sometimes joke that we're we're gonna have to give out wristbands like we're like it's it it's a concert or something. But that's what being able to speak at one of these board meetings and share your experience and share your frustrations and share your dreams would really mean to people. And the, the system that we have right now is not working. Um, I know every single member of this board has has been here when uh, someone takes all eight speaker cards and only one side of a story gets heard. Um, a lot of parents and teachers and stakeholders are here in the audience wanting to speak to us and aren't given that opportunity at that point. Sometimes rules are waived or they're not followed or new rules are created on the, the spot. Um, <laughs> I think every single one of you has seen how frustrated that I get about that. You know, at, at, at heart, I'm a prosecutor. I believe in rules, and I believe that if there is a rule, everyone needs to follow it, and everyone needs to be treated the, the, the same. I, I have some ideas about how we can change that process to make sure that all, all sides of an issue are heard so the, the board members really get an opportunity to, to hear from everyone who wants to, to speak to us on on a, a, a topic, and I think um, that needs to be one of the first things the new board president tackles. The, the second is um, this idea that there's a, a big debate, um, not just uh, up here, but amongst everyone about should we have more meetings, should we have fewer meetings. I think everyone agrees that having meetings that last 12 and a half hours aren't the most effective way to run, uh, run this. And, and I have always been pretty open about the fact that I don't think more meetings necessarily create better policy. Um, and, and we've gone through a couple in, uh, iterations of committees and, and what works and what doesn't work, and I'm not going to go into it, but, but I have kind of strong feelings about that. But I, I realized something the other day in that um, the, the board, for example, has had some ad hoc committees, including one looking for an in inspector general that hopefully we'll get to address later, but those work beautifully. So there is a process in this district where we've had ad hoc committees that really are substantive and get a lot of work done and can move the debate forward in a way that I don't think we've been, been able to utilize. And I think adding to the committee structure but changing what they're responsible for so they're actual substantive policy committees that then bring forward recommendations to the board might be the most effective way to restructure the, the committee system. Um, and we, we could really figure out ways to engage our communities more uh, at, rather than ju just having a, a bunch of dog and pony shows. And, and I think that th those are kind of two of the biggest issues that the next board president can move forward with. Another piece of this is, uh, many of you know, I was a big supporter of our uh, new mayor, Eric Garcetti, and, and I think um, having that strong working relationship with the mayor is going to be vitally important as we move forward. There are a number of issues that uh, 
the school district and the city could work much more closely on um, in order to increase cost savings and really deliver a better educational product to the children of Los Angeles. Um, the mayor has spoken a lot about an issue I know close to many of our hearts. Um, Ms. Ratliff spoke about it in her um, oath of office and that, that is the uh, career education and the fact that you know, we're not maximizing resources here. And, and that, that is a specific interest of our new, new mayor, and it's something that I think we at the board have a huge opportunity to move forward with, with the right leadership. Um, one, more, one, one more point. The, the other day I, I was at, um, I was somewhere and I heard an elected official say that one of the things he was most, most proud of is that in his whole time in office, he never compromised. And I hope what he meant was he never compromised his principles and his values, because that's certainly something that I respect. But, but there, there really is a feeling out there that, that, that compromise is, is a bad word, and, and somehow uh, that, that's not something that we should be doing. And, and I think that that's exactly the wrong way to move forward. And, and I'll use as an example, for the last six, eight months, I've been, I, I worked on um, a resolution that passed this board unanimously that had to do with teachers who had to be pulled out of the classroom and how they are treated and what kind of notice they are given and uh, what the process is for doing those types of investigations so they are fair and they are efficient. And um, in the end, we got a product that not only did everyone on this board support the, the outcome, but UTLA and ALA and the folks in this building supported it, and parents who had gone through this with their child's teacher, everyone was on board. Did everyone think it was 100% exactly what they, they wanted? No, but everyone found something in it that moved it forward, and I think that's the kind of leadership that that this board um, needs. In uh, Ms. Ralph, in your in your speech, you you talked about some principals who I've worked with who celebrated strengths and bolstering and bolstered weaknesses, and and I think that's what a good board president does. You know, I know uh, I know a few things that I'm good at. Um, I know many more things that I'm not good at. And, and looking around this table, you know, we have five educators at this table. You are the policy experts. We have a social worker at the table who knows more about how um, a child and his or her family fits into to this and, and needs to kind of keep us on task. Um, you know, I am the only parent on this board. I have a lot at stake about the future of LA Unified. My two boys are the most important thing in the world to, to, to me. And I want this district to thrive because I want nothing but success for them. Um, you know, Steve, you're the most passionate advocate for this district that we have, and we need to use that passion much better. Um, Ms. Ratliff, I, you know, beside the whole, you know, lawyer valley girl thing that we have going, um, <laughs> I just, I, I sense that we're going to be able to move forward um, on issues that Dr. Vladovic spoke about, very important, vitally relevant issues that we're going to be tackling um, in a way where, um, you know, the board president maybe can focus on the nuts and bolts and um, the subject matter experts uh, and advocates on the board can move forward with the pieces that they're best at and we'll be able to do really amazing things for the children of Los Angeles. Thank you, Board Member Gallatin. Um, on the selection of the Board President, uh, the consideration is taken up in order of nominations. So that's how we'll begin on the selection of Board Member Dr. Richard Vladovic as the first Dr. Board Dr. Daisy, member. I have a second motion. And my second motion is that each candidate express who they are going to choose as their vice president and why. <laughs> um, a motion has been made and seconded. Are there any objections, board members? Hearing no objections, I guess 
we should just go in the same order as consideration. Dr. Vladovic, the floor is yours, sir. Uh, I was going to appoint Steve Zimmer, yes. and I'll tell you why. Uh, I felt that uh, we need a uh, active committee of the whole, and he would be chairing that committee where we would have additional meetings to explore topics that the board feels needs to be pushed. And uh, I feel everyone in this room is qualified to be a vice president. You asked me for my preference if I were elected right now, and that's who I would pick and why. <clears throat> Thank you, sir. Wow. Well, the Gallison, the floor is yours. I was going to pick, uh, ask Mr. Ratliff if she would be interested in serving in that function. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, board members. Um, let me just stop it. Are there any other motions? How about public speaker? Oh. All the new members get to ask these motions. Only new people get to ask these motions. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Marguerite. I have a feeling not in the future. <laughs> <laughs> okay, board oh, members, boy. Um, on the selection of board member Dr. Richard Vladbeck, first board member nominated to serve as board president, Mr. Crane, would you kindly call the roll? Yes, Ms. Gallatin. No. No vote. Ms. Garcia? No. No vote. Mr. Kaiser? Yes. Yes vote. Ms. Lavon? Yes. Yes. Ms. Vladbeck? Yes. And yes vote. Dr. Vladbeck? Yes. Yes vote. Yes. Yeah. 